What is going on guys? Welcome back to another editing tutorial. My name is Michael and today we're going to be covering using keyframes in Adobe Premiere Pro. Welcome back guys. All right, so we are here in Adobe Premiere Pro and I brought in a photo uh, rather than a video just so you guys can see the effects of the keyframes and it probably will make a lot more sense if the image is not moving and it's just staying still to start with. All right, so I have my photo down here in the timeline already. So if you have a video that you're working with or if it's a photo, just drag it into the timeline. You're gonna select it so it's highlighted. And now in the effects control panel, this is where you're gonna be doing all of our keyframing. So we're gonna make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. I'm gonna drag this out to the left just so we have a lot of real estate to work with up here. So before we concern ourselves with anything over here, we're just gonna play what we have in the timeline already and see that it's just an image, it's staying still, and it's not moving at all. Now, this is where keyframes come into play because we wanna make um, adjustments that we didn't shoot initially in the camera or that our image or whatever video isn't doing already. So we wanna zoom in, uh, shift to the left, shift to the right, whatever it is, we need movement to this image and keyframes is how we're gonna do it. So we're gonna go up here to the motion panel and below it says position and scale. So if you look to the left of position and scale, you'll see these little stopwatches and this is gonna be your icon for keyframing for everything in Adobe Premiere Pro and also After Effects. So if we click the little stopwatch next to position, we notice right away that it's gonna highlight blue and it's also gonna put this little diamond, you can only see half of it, but it's gonna be a little diamond in our keyframe graph over here. So now that we've set a keyframe at the beginning of our clip, we want to drag the marker to the point of the clip where we want the movement to end. So let's say I want the movement to start here and end about right here. So once you've selected your second point, you want to come over and press the add keyframe button. Now that you have the two points inside of your keyframe graph, we're going to want to come over here and switch the values so that this actually moves over time. Because if you play it right now, it's gonna have no movement since we didn't adjust the values for the second keyframe. So if you're anywhere in here and you wanna to go to the previous keyframe or the keyframe after, go to these arrows and it'll go to the previous keyframe or the other one will go to the next keyframe. So now that we're on this keyframe right here, it's highlighted in blue, we know it's highlighted here and that represents that we're on the keyframe. We need to switch this value so that this movement is actually there. So let's say we want our image or whatever, our video, to move to the right, shift to the right. We wanna move the x-axis to the right. And now if you watch playback over time, it's gonna shift between those keyframes, okay? So now let's say we want, in the middle of that, of this transformation, we want it to go downwards. Now let's watch. It's gonna go down and then back up to the end point. Obviously, there's endless ways to move the values, um, shift the frame, that's where the creativity all comes in. But there's actually a different way to do this and I'll show you that right now. So if you want to delete all these keyframes and you, know, you just don't like what you did, you come over to the stopwatch, press down, and then it'll ask you, do you want to delete all existing keyframes? You say yes, and this will wipe everything out. Now, an important thing to note is that you, you deleted all the keyframes at this point over here. So at this point in the map, we have a giant black bar because the value is all the way shifted to the right. If we want the keyframes to be gone and we want to go back to the original point, we either need to delete here using the stopwatch and then reset it manually or go back to the beginning and then delete the keyframes from there and then you'll have your original frame. So now if you want to just say, you know, I don't want to use these sliders, I want to just drag it on here, that's fine, you can also do that. You're going to come up to motion, press down, and it's going to give you this blue highlighted outline of your frame. So now if you press down again on the stopwatch to create your endpoint, your endpoint keyframe, drag to the point where you want the movement to end, and move, press down and move this frame. Oh, we got to switch. Okay, so you have to have this selected. This motion tab has to be highlighted so that the blue uh, outside bars come up. So now if you wanna move this from our original point, we can literally just come over, grab our frame, and move it wherever we want. See the values changing as I drag this around? So this is just an easier way to get where you want to without having to play with all the numbers. Um, so let's just say I like it down here. Now the keyframe is gonna go 
right where I wanted to. Nice, so I really like that. Um, wanna delete these keyframes. Remember, go to the watch, delete them. So let's work with scale. So let's say we want to keyframe starting here. So we set our endpoint. We drag to the point of our clip that we want. So I want to start here, press the keyframe button. It's gonna set our endpoint keyframe. Drag to the part of the clip where we want the movement to end. So I want it to end right here. Then we need to switch this value. So I wanted to zoom in to 130. And now if we play this back, it gives us a nice zoom in within our keyframes. All right, so now we have our nice zoom in instead of our keyframes, but I think we can make this even smoother. So one really cool thing about keyframes is that you can manipulate the curve so it's smoother, it you know has a smooth zoom in or a smooth zoom out, and it's actually really simple. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drag over the keyframes so that they're both highlighted. Then you're gonna right click using command, or I'm sorry, control click on a Mac and you're gonna get this little pop-up window. Now you can either use ease in or ease out, and those are the presets. So I'm gonna choose ease in and you'll see the difference right away. It's a lot smoother than this. It's just a little bit less jarring. So if you come down to the left side of the scale and use this little arrow to drag down, you'll see the graph of what it's actually doing to it. So let me go back, press ease in, and you'll see that it changes it by putting Bezier tools on both of the keyframes. All right, so now that's pretty cool, but you know, you wanna customize it to be your own, and I totally understand that. So what you're gonna do is drag over both keyframes, right click, go to Bezier, and now it's gonna give you these pulleys where you can do whatever you want with it. So let's make this second keyframe, let's just do it extreme and put it at 200. It's gonna be a big zoom in, so now you can see this incline grew and if we play it back it's going to be a lot faster a lot bigger of an incline or of a zoom in rather and we want it to be a lot smoother we want it to zoom in a lot in the beginning and then slow down dramatically so we want to boost this up in the beginning and have it be a nice curve like that so now if we play it back, it's gonna go really fast in the beginning and gradually get slower pretty quickly. Just like that. All right, so now we want the opposite. So now we want it to go pretty slow in the beginning, a slow zoom, and then we want it to punch in really, really quick at the end. So we're gonna take this beginning point, drag it all the way out like this, and just make that nice curve so that we get that nice zoom in at the end. So it's gonna be really slow to start, and then it's gonna add a nice punch at the end. Boom. So there's endless things that you can do here. Um, if you see like zoom in transitions and stuff like that, you know, this is like a really simple way to do a nice transition between boom, just zooming in. And uh, yeah, it works, works really well. Also with the position, does the same thing if you wanna keyframe it your position and like, you know, do it ease in or ease out that way. Just highlight the keyframes, right click, and do the same thing with that. All right, so we're gonna come down here to the opacity, and if you've ever wondered how somebody does like a nice soft fade in or fade out in their videos, which is, you know, pretty commonly used, but if you don't know how to do this, um, it's very, very simple. You're gonna start at zero opacity. Make sure that your watch is blue so that the keyframe is set to right here, zero drag to where you want to zoom in. I'm sorry, drag to where you want the opacity to be full. So we're gonna do zero to start, drag across on our clip, go up to 100. And now if we play this back, it's gonna be a nice fade in. I'll delete these keyframes so you can see it better. Okay, it's a nice fade in there. Let's make it a little bit longer, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna grab our keyframes, right click and we're gonna switch them to bezier tools so that we can manipulate them how we want so i want it to be a nice smooth little ramp right here like that yeah that looks really nice so now we're gonna get this nice smooth dissolve in and that's looking awesome and it's all based on these simple simple keyframes in adobe premiere pro and guys that is basically all you need to know about keyframes if you ever see a stopwatch it means it can be keyframed and it's literally just as simple as all of this that i just showed you 
But thank you guys again so much for checking in. We have tutorials coming out on Thursdays and Saturdays. And I know last week I kind of choked up and didn't really post that much. So I apologize for that, but I promise you I'll make it up to you guys. May even post an extra tutorial this week, but please just comment in the section below anything you guys want to see. I definitely have a ton of ideas and cool stuff that I'm going to show you guys over the next couple weeks and months. But thank you guys again, and I will see you on the next one. Peace out.